Hi, how you doing? Justin here. A bit of a different video for you today. I'm here with Jason and Neville from Guitar Techniques magazine. Uh, invited them down mainly because I'd met, never met Neville before, uh, even though we've been running in the same circles for a number of years, so I thought it might be fun for them to come to the studio and go for a nice pub lunch. And uh, during lunch we realised that I didn't know much about the history of Guitar Techniques magazine, and probably you guys don't either, and I figured it would be of interest to most of you, and, you know, particularly the subscribers. So uh, do you guys want to give us a bit of a rundown on the history of uh, Guitar Techniques magazine? Well, I actually launched Guitar Techniques back in 1994. Um, I've been working on Guitarist magazine for quite a long time, and realised that the technique section in Guitarist was really popular in its own right. And mm -hmm. we kind of figured it would be nice to hive a larger version of that off and create a magazine out of it because it mm. seemed to be the demand. So I spoke to Phil Hillborn, who was at the time the music editor and guitarist, and we formulated this whole magazine based on technique. Mm. And uh, it was successful from day one. It was really good, very different, all techniques. There's nothing in, of anything else in it, the odd little, little article, but by and large, it was all techniques. And back in the early days, it was all transcriptions as well, every single feature in the magazine was was a whether it's an acoustic thing it would be a a, 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 tr a transcription of, i don't know more than words by extreme uh -huh. or if, if it was blues it might be born under a bad sign by albert king or whatever or satriani and by in fact the first cover was going to be satriani versus Vi, who's the best uh -huh. and when it came to the thing we actually sort of did verse Vi, but we didn't we didn't make it a contest we just looked at both of their lives and how Wait, they When worked. was this thing? 94. 94. 94. And um, so Phil moved on to do other things and Jason ended up being the music editor and Jason is now the music editor of Guitar Techniques, hmm. guitarist and indeed Total Guitar. So you've been there right from the start then, Joe? Um, well, I joined uh, the company that uh, makes these mags uh, future around about 98, the back end of 98, so I started uh -huh. on Total Guitar. And then it was around about uh, 2003, I think, that I became sort of a, a senior sort of music editor across all three titles, mm -hmm. which meantime I moved more into guitar techniques and we got someone else in to do uh, Toto Guitar. And uh, pretty much since um, 2003, I've been on guitar techniques. Mm -hmm. but, you know, mm -hmm. that's been my main job, do other things for a few of the little, you know, the guitarist and much less on the guitar now but uh, fundamentally my main role is on, on guitar techniques uh, mm. keeps me and one of the busy. things that jason did that probably nobody knows outside of this room is that he helped reformulate the way that tab is done because it had been in all kinds of different ways and people had this way of doing it and this is how you bend up and this is how you do this mm. and it was very disparate it was very um disjointed so jason first of all got all our magazines together doing the same style so everybody who read our magazines would know exactly what that term mm. meant or that sign meant and I think a lot of other people have kind of cottoned on to a large degree to, to our way of doing it haven't they? Yeah I mean it was a case of you know one of the other things as well is when you have a writer that may be writing for guitar techniques and may end up moving over to guitars for something or indeed to a guitar it's nice to have everyone have the same presentation style mm -hmm. so I mean, as you know, you know, you get when you're looking at, say, a tab book from different companies, say some of the U.S. brands like Cherry Lane or, or Hal Leonard, mm -hmm. you know, how you notate a string bend or a harmonic or a whammy bar dive or two hand tapping. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a ton of different techniques with, with guitar. So it felt an ideal time uh, to sort of formulate a, an approach so that readers across any of these three titles would see the same presentation. Mm -hmm. Um, and also uh, the tutor that w would have the same approach, so you wouldn't have to write differently, you know, transcribe. Yeah, we also you found Sibelius or Finale or Finale. We use Finale, yeah. yeah. Finale, 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 yeah. Still. Finale yeah. is used for all the three titles, yeah. Mm. Both wow. the, the guys, because we have <coughs> bespoke guys that engrave. There's a, a couple, Simon Troop and Jenny Troop, that do Toto Guitar engrave mm. using Finale, and then our long-standing guy Chris mm. Francis uh, does Guitarist and uh, Guitar Techniques. Uh, but both both groups of guys, uh, mm. you know, they're using finale. So yeah, one of the things that we'd found, or Jason had found particularly, is some of the people were doing tab wanted to get so many things on the stave on the music to be helpful that it ended up actually being mm. counterproductive because there was so much mm. there mm. that Jason kind of streamlined it so it's much more readable now that than, than it was and uh, that's what we like about it our yeah. our tab in our our mags is, is very streamlined and makes sense 
it's, it's a cool thing. Yeah. Hmm. But one of the great things about Guitar Techniques is we got some great tutors, we got some great people writing for us. Right in the early days, um, we got two Guitarist of the Year competition winners, one Guthrie Govan, one Dave Kilminster, hmm. um, to start writing for us. And um, I won't say we gave them profile, but we couldn't have hurt. Mm -hmm. um, what we wanted is their brilliant guitar playing, and they're, uh, both of them are great writers as well. Mm -hmm. and actually, that's quite unusual, isn't it, to find mm -hmm. somebody who is a cool writer. You are a great writer mm -hmm. and, a, and a great music writer as well, and it's not often you get that. What, mm -hmm. what do you think about that? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, a, a typical mm -hmm. tutor, it's a tough job because obviously it goes without saying they have to be able to play. Um, and play very, very well. And then there's the notion that they may be employed to transcribe a song, mm -hmm. which is a little less these days, certainly in guitar techniques, because we don't run song transcriptions anymore. Um, but nevertheless, you'd be able, you need to transcribe and understand what's going on in the song so you can do it incredibly authentically. Then there's also the aspect which tends to be overlooked, but these, these guys have to duplicate the audio. So the idea is, is that it's not just the guitar playing, but you have to do the bass parts, the keyboard parts, the drums, and then produce it so it sounds pretty close mm -hmm. or indeed close to the record. So there's a production, you know, producer um, job. Then you have to chat about what was what's the thinking process behind these songs. So, you know, this guy used his third finger to do this bend, and this, you, this guy mm -hmm. used you know, all fingers on both hands to do this tapping passage. Then you've got the writing, so you've got stuff like the, the, the backstory of that artist, you know, he was born so-and-so, he was in this band, so there's the research. Um, and then do that quite eloquently as well. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to, uh, you know, occasionally we do a little bit of tidying up or trimming, but you don't want someone that's not particularly eloquent when they're mm -hmm. writing. So the idea of being able to play the guitar very, very well, get the right sound, produce the backing track that you're going to play over, then write well, and then produce, you know, the handwritten transcription mm -hmm. as well, so to be able to, you know, read music <coughs> and tap. So it's a loaded job, you know, I, there's a lot of skill sets yeah. involved. The, the first one I did like that for you guys, I don't know if you remember, was What Is and What Should Never Be. Oh, yeah, yeah. What Is and Should, yeah, what yeah, is is that, Should Never Be, yeah. Yeah, it's that yeah, slidey, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, to copy that, I had to tempo map the original song because it changed tempo yeah, all the time. Yeah. So that meant that all of my programming and drums and everything like that had to be done by hand. So I couldn't just use like a little drum loop. No, no, no. So I had to literally have the click track, which was moving tempo through the song and try and play along on my MIDI keyboard, the drums and do yeah. the guitar. Yeah. And then trying to replicate all of the slide stuff. And yeah. I'm, I'm not an amazing slide player, mm. but it was a, I remember yeah. feeling like, I think I've bitten off a bit here. You know, there was like, oh yeah, I can do that gig. Oh, oh yeah. really? That gig's got a lot of mm. things. Parts it's a to tough it, you know? thing. It's a tough thing. Yeah. I mean, we went to the pub for lunch and we were telling you in the pub about when we asked Guthrie to do... I mean, he could do anybody. Mm -hmm. He kind of got a bit saddled with that, which he understandably doesn't like because he's way more than that. But we asked him... I remember asking him, can, we, can you do this ta Pat Metheny track mm. for us? He said, I don't really do Pat Metheny. It's not really my style. And I said, well, we're kind of up against it, but here, mm -hmm. you know, fancy giving it a go. All oh, right. Like two days later, perfect Pat Metheny mm -hmm. turns up, you know. And all these guys, mm -hmm. they're so brilliant at doing it. And as Jason said, we don't do tab songs anymore because you can get them mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the internet so easily. We tend to concentrate now on here's the theory behind this or get the most out of the blue scale we've coming up, we've mm -hmm. got coming up. And that, a lot of people really interact with that because you know what it's like. Um, well, the, the blue scale's the blue scale. Here's the notes. Well, yeah, uh -huh. but Robin <laughs> Ford uses it, plays totally differently to Albert uh -huh. King, who uses it, plays mm -hmm. totally different to Mark Knopfler, who uses mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, let's look at it in a bit more of a macro way. So that's what we tend <coughs> to do more of now mm -hmm. than the tab stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's quite an organic uh, job as well, because you don't want to give the impression to anybody that everybody... That, that works on the magazine is an absolute uber expert in all styles everywhere. The thing is, is that over the years there, you get to know, never mind, get to know the sort of the skill sets of different people. So some people are maybe more country inclined, other people are like great R&B guys, other guys are like shred metal dudes. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get the wrong gig for the wrong guy. So you choose the right guys. Now we're very fortunate that we're, we've got so many phenomenal world-class uh, guys on tap that we're going to ask a certain guy to do one thing and another guy will excel in this so mm -hmm. he has a you know long-running series 
And um, so you get to use those skill sets. That said, there are times when you can get somebody and you go, well, look, we've got this, um, we've got this Jump Blues article. We've got eight, mm. you know, eight pages of notation to deal with. We want this artist, this artist, and this artist in it. And we want this major type of feel. We want a minor mm -hmm. feel. We want a 12-8 feel. Um, you up for that? And sometimes I go, look, I know that terrain, but I need to do further research. Mm -hmm. Other people are like, well, this is a new terrain for me, but I'm so up for that. Mm. I'd like to have a go at yeah. it. So some people take on the challenge because, as lots of our guys have said, and one guy that brings to mind particularly is Dave Kilminster, the person that, that excels or the person that gets the most out of doing this work is the tutor, is the transcriber. Mm -hmm. because the point is, is that they will always learn something new. And Dave, all the stuff that Dave did back in the day, you know, in the sort of... Um, the, the, the mid and the, the late 90s and maybe the early noughties, it, it empowered him, you know, improved uh -huh. his playing, yeah. his musical toolbox. He, Dave kind so, of has just told us that he kind of learned to read and write music, to write for guitar. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He taught himself in a very short period of time to do it. So that's a, what a brilliant thing wow. to get. And yeah. I think Guthrie is a little bit like that as well. Um, but also the other thing about GT is that we use a lot of the guys, a lot of the main schools... You know, BIM, mm -hmm. um, RGT, mm -hmm. um, uh, the Institute, the Institute, yeah. ACM not not so much now, but um, quite a few of them. Who else is there? There's well, some... there's a few BIMs. I mean, yeah, few, and we've BIMs. got Dean yeah. coming up, so yeah, yeah. we've got Rock School, we've Rock got School. Uh, RGT. So yeah. there's a bunch of mm -hmm. them, and it's uh, you know they 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 provide a tutor, so we get to see fresh blood, you know, fresh mm -hmm. a fresh person. Yeah. And um, we'll discuss the type of content. So we've got a great guy doing slide at the moment for, for RGT, say. We've got um, Ian over at the Institute doing so a rhythm who, column. Who's, who figures out content? Because you, you just said, like, in your Jump Blues examples, like, oh, yeah. we're going to do six pages on this sort of thing. Is that never or you or it's both? It's a mixture. Or, you know? mainly, mainly Jason at the moment, because um, if we want to feature on, um, as I say, Jump Blues, Jason needs to trawl through mm -hmm. YouTube, blah, 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 find out who the jump, great jump blues players were, mm -hmm. listen to the stuff. He needs to write out in a great big long series of emails to the contributor what we want and how mm -hmm. we want it done. I'm, I can't read music or write music, so I'm an ignoramus on that front. So that has to be him. I'll often come up with ideas and we bat them around. Mm -hmm. We'll sometimes have a chat about stuff and I'll say, oh, I thought of this on the way through. He'll say, great idea, jot it down. Mm -hmm, yeah. It's in the next issue. We get ideas from readers. Readers yeah. will often write in and say, you know, this is great mag, but what about that? And again, mm -hmm. we'll try and do it. Quite a few recently, we've, we've come direct from, from reader uh, reader suggestions. Yeah. Mm. I think a lot of it is, I mean, we tend to, or at least certainly I do, but I think we, we, all, we all think this is the idea that what you're putting into the magazine is you want it to be as broad as possible. So I may, may reference over, over lunch the idea of the uh, the buffet approach, you know, a bit of everything. I mean, fundamentally, guitar techniques has a kind of intermediate, lower intermediate, intermediate, upper intermediate, and then more advanced. That's the main sort of meat and potatoes of our of our readership and of our, our, our um, people that, that subscribe or buy us in the shops. Um, but what we want to do is in the guys that generally tend to be the guitar mag buyers are sort of blues rock orientated, generally speaking, mm -hmm. but they're certainly interested in having a bit of an acoustic thing on the go. They might be interested in some country. They may want to try a bit of classical finger picking. Then, you know, other little bits and pieces, maybe a bit of R&B, you know, maybe some Motown, um, artists, pastiches or artist appraisals. I mean, the latest issue we're working on, um, we've got Gary Moore on the cover. And one of our one of our great writers, Richard Barrett, who plays guitar for Tony Hadley as well. When he's got time, he's writing for us as well, and he's just done a phenomenal Gary Moore uh, presentation. But we also have people that are more a class of more cerebral writers. I mean, one of one of our great guys that we always have a great chat with him is Milton Mernon mm -hmm. who's the husband of Bridget, who. Uh, writes our long-standing classical column, mm -hmm. Bridget's phenomenal. She's just, just a great, great uh, classical guitar player. She plays electric as well, really well. But she, she does just every issue. She mm -hmm. she makes an arrangement of a classical piece and she plays it, you know, flawlessly. We get more letters <clears throat> about Bridget's column probably than anybody mm -hmm. else. She's mm -hmm. great because her tone is phenomenal. Yeah. She does these arrangements. She'll take a full orchestral piece and distill it down to the harmonic. Yeah. stuff and here it is for played for one guitar it's mm. really nice yeah. beautiful tone 
really fun. Yeah. And Milton is Dr. Milton Mermakidis, isn't he? Yeah. Head of Surrey, Surrey, he teaches head of guitar, head of music, I think, at Surrey University, teacher at the academy, as indeed does Bridget. Mm-hmm. But people like Sean Baxter, Sean's a phenomenal player, mm-hmm. phenomenal teacher. A lot of the best teachers in this country were taught by Sean, as mm-hmm. you, you probably I was know. taught by Sean. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, well, Sean taught me there, there you go. Yeah. And I mean, Phil Hilborn, who mm-hmm. still, still, still writes for us. He does only mm-hmm. does one thing now, but Phil's been in the mag since day one, which mm-hmm. is great. And we want to keep him there because mm-hmm. he's a very popular mm-hmm. player and he's a very popular teacher. Um, and this Jamie Humphreys, another mm-hmm. great guitarist, uh, mm-hmm. uh, still occasionally writes for us, but was a long-standing writer. Lee Hodgson, great country player um, from the, the Institute in London. Lee was um, a teacher of mine when I came over as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and Ian Scott, who's now a writer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a lot, yeah. yeah. So, so there's a lot. I mean, excuse us if we've left anybody off. There is a lot of guys, isn't there? There's a great there roster yeah. of players. And the other great thing I'll quickly say is we have a great iPad version. Mm. where um, it, on the magazine there's a CD on the cover of the magazine that has all the content of the tab in the magazine mm. done audio so you can you can look at your tab and you can you can hear the audio that, that mm-hmm. we've done and that's for every single lesson in the magazine um, on the iPad version it's all contained in one so you literally click on the page and the music plays uh-huh. the audio plays and there's a cursor that follows the tab through note for note it's all synced exactly mm-hmm. to the to the audio and it's a brilliant thing mm-hmm. um if you if you live abroad and you can't get the physical magazine go to itunes and, and try even just try it out because it's really really good mm-hmm. it's almost how you know had that facility been yeah. there 30 years ago it's probably how you would have yeah. envisaged it Guys, we're going to have to wrap up. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. It's time for me to go and pick up my daughter from nursery. So, look, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this little chat with the guys and uh, do go and check out the Guitar Techniques magazine and uh, we'll see you all very soon. All right. Thanks. Thank you.